I got a steel MS-462 here, and it has a stripped out bar stud. If you got one of these, stick around and we'll show you how to fix it. Alright, <clears throat> this right here is an MS-462 uh, steel chainsaw. And what it's got is the stud that holds the bar in place, holds this side plate on, and uh, puts compression on the side plate against the bar to hold the bar in place. When you adjust your bar in and out, it'll, it'll clamp it and hold it in place. So, we had the back stud that was stripped out. I already repaired it. Now the front side is stripped out too. I don't know if they make these cheaper or if it's pot metal for aluminum in the casing. I don't know what it is, but they're stripping out pretty good. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to take care of this. And we're going to do it with one of these. What this is right here is just a standard zinc plated half inch by 13 thread pitch bolt. That's what we're going to use to fix it with. Now remember, I'm a goober. So unless you're a goober too, don't try any of this stuff at home. Now we'll start off by taking this side plate off. Now these, these nuts on this particular saw are held captive to this side plate. So this stud's going to just come out with the side plate. I'm going to have to get the nut off of the stud so I can get my measurements off of the uh, stud itself that's in here. And I'll show you the one that we put in there. Hopefully I can do a, a close-up and you can see pretty much what I got. So uh, give you an idea what I'm going to do. And this is not something that you're going to be able to do with just your average tools. I, I've seen people take a drill, chuck something up in it with a, with a file, and do just as good as I can do on my lathe. I ain't that good. I need the lathe. So that's what we're going to use to do this with. All right. We got that bar off there. And I also need to dress that bar because I think it's galded. One of my guys, I think, uh, run it without any uh, bar all in here and just about burn it up. So you see the stud here is held captive in this nut. So I might have to get that out. Uh, looks like... Looks like the threads of the stud itself stripped. So you see this stud right here looks pretty much the same. But what the biggest difference is, is the original has kind of had a shoulder down here towards the bottom. When I get this apart, we'll be able to look at it better. But it's a shoulder that will stop it up here against this plate. Now once I drill this out, and I might drill it out, I might check, I, I think it's 20... 2764 for a half inch by 13 thread pitch uh, drill bit, but anyway, uh, it's it's not gonna have that shoulder because I'm I I, I can't measure I can't uh, machine it into that bit that bolt right there to get the the strength that I need. Now this this stud back here, the original studs, you can judge by my finger, it comes up to the first knuckle. That's about how far the first original stud goes in there. But this one right here. Let me show you how far it goes in. Because there's a bolt just exactly like this one that I used to fix this back stud. It goes in that far, which goes up to my second knuckle. So it's at least twice as far into this frame that this bolt goes. And I also loctited it with a red anaerobic uh, loctite, and that's holding in place. I don't even think my guys pull that one out. So let's get this off here and then we'll see about getting us some measurements. Oh, kind of tight on there. So you see these bolt, these nuts are held captive in this side plate. And the worst part about these, and I don't know if steel's running out of money or something, I don't really get it. Because uh, this bolt, if you see, it goes that far before it ever reaches threads. That's about a half inch. And on the front side, you start engaging with threads right off. 
So that whole nut is about it's about three quarter inches. Uh, it's about three quarter inches thick, and only about a quarter inch of thread is what's in there. So this was repaired once before. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, it was drilled out just slightly bigger, and a helical was put on this uh, this this stud right here, and it was put back in there. And that was actually JB welded, I believe, in place. And uh, of course, that's all that's all pulled out. Uh, helical never hold, never hold as good as just regular regular threads are going to do. So uh, that's why we're going to come in here and we're going to take and drill this out uh, and replace it with that half inch by 13. Uh, I got to look at it a little bit to make sure that I ain't going to do any damage to anything inside here. Now on this back side, it's uh, basically going into the block of uh, the the engine itself. Because here's your, your what you would call your crankshaft. It's your uh, pulley that turns your chain. So, it's this stud goes actually into the wall of the motor. There's no oil inside these. They uh, run on mixed gas. So, you don't have to worry about breaching the, the uh, uh, wall of the, the motor and doing, doing damage. You just have to worry about breaching the wall of the motor and damaging something inside the motor. But, I was able to drill this and... Uh, I drilled it. This one is deeper than it should be. It's drilled about that deep into this back stud. Now the front side, I ain't going to do that because I'm afraid because right here, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be uh, right here and possibly I think right in here, I'll, I'll have to see to be sure. I think both spots probably is uh, your chain, your chain oiler. Uh, so your automatic oil will come from your chain, your oil reservoir for your chain itself will, will kind of, I guess, gravity feed to the chain right here. Feed in and keep your uh, bar lubricated so that it don't uh, burn your bar up. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to have to find me some tape because I'm going to tape the end of this bolt off. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to let this one go but as deep. As this one is. See, I wanted to take and come up to this shoulder, but what I think I do is I'll cut this bolt off. Let's see. Yeah, I'll cut this bolt off so I can still get up to this shoulder. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to back cut this on my lathe. Normally, you put a piece in your lathe and you start from the end and you dribble on back with it. Well, I'm going to do the opposite. Uh, I'm going to chuck this up in there and I'm going to take and I'm going to cut from here back so I've got enough to make my new threads for that bolt that goes on the front. I don't know what the thread pitch on this is and then again it don't matter because I'm going to drill it out. Alright, <clears throat> now you're going to have to bear with me. This, uh, I ain't set up for nothing. I mean, I ain't got no equipment. All I got is a cell phone and that's, that's what I'm using. And, um, it, I don't know, it might be wonky, it might be whatever. But uh, hopefully you can, I can zoom in well enough for you to see something of what's going on. I've definitely got nothing set up out here in the shop. It, and you see how junky it is. It's hard to, hard to get around out here. Now this is, uh, this is what I'm going to be threading for the new bolt. And you see that it's a lot, I'm, I'm drilling my hole a lot deeper than what I got uh, on this thread. Now this right here is... Shoot, it's might near the depth of the whole length of this, this stud. I say that's uh I got a tape. I do have a tape. Imagine that. That'll never happen again. That is an inch and a half. So I got this drill bit marked off at an inch and a half. Now why do I have it marked off deeper than my original threads? Well, my tap. It's not a bottom tap, so it's not going to make threads all the way to the bottom of the hole that I drill. So I need to drill the hole deeper than what I'm trying to get. And I'm trying to get as much thread as possible. I really don't want, see that's going to that's going to pretty much take the whole amount there. But it's not going to go that deep because in, in this case, the, the thread, the tap will go in there that deep, but it won't tap threads this deep. So I still will have to trim the end of this this nut off, this bolt off. Uh, so let's get this drilled, and 
we'll see see what we got next now I need you guys to be understanding because a lot of times I'm thinking and talking at the same time now although I cannot walk and chew bubble gum at the same time I can talk and think at the same time the only problem with that is I sometimes talk about things I'm thinking and you're not in the whole loop of what's being said versus what's being thought. If you understand that, I'm sorry. So, uh, here we go. And I know this is probably blocking your view, but let's see if we can... Don't worry about if things don't look level or anything like that because they're a whole lot more level in reality than on that crooked camera right there. Actually, cell phone. We're going to put it in forward this time. into problems because I'm not sure why but it's an interrupted cut uh, once you get deep enough in there and I think uh, maybe it's all channel I, mean, I don't know I really don't know what it is but it, it does turn into an inter interrupted cut most of this uh, drill right here when I drilled it was an interrupted cut now you might be asking yourself why ain't you doing it on drill press because I don't have a drill press press that's got enough throat to be able to chuck this drill and put this saw in there and do it on that. But if I was smart, I'd have one and I'd be doing it on drill press, not by hand. about all we're gonna get right through the through the wall there ain't no uh there ain't no meat back behind it so we ain't gonna get all the threads on this side that we got on the other side or on the back one back one we ended up with uh like i said inch and, and, and you shouldn't unplug stuff like that but on the back one we was able to get threads about an inch and a half deep this front one we ain't going to be able to get threads down that deep. Alright, so we got a hole drill, drilled out. And uh, by the looks of things, the best I can tell is, I don't know, I can't really tell for sure how much uh, thread we're going to get in there, but I don't think it's going to be a whole lot. It's going to be more than what was in there before, but we're going to see. So, uh, one half by 13 uh, tap. Is what we're going to use to uh, tap this hole and what I'm using for lubricant is WD-40 which is really a good uh, lubricant for aluminum and that's what this is so yeah put a little snort on there in there we're going to see what we can mess up And I'm probably going to be able to tap this straight through without backing out and cleaning the tap. Or even reversing the tap. Because usually what you want to do anytime you're tapping something, especially soft metals, you want to have good lubricant. But at the same time, uh, even with steel threads or with uh, stuff that don't have a lot of carbon and stuff in it. Um, and... and I don't know, I, I haven't tapped a whole lot of stuff with carbon, or but I have tapped a lot of harder metals. And I don't tend to have that problem. It's harder to tap, but uh, I don't tear my threads out. So, but what you do is you'll make a half a turn, a quarter to a half a turn. You're just going to go by feel, how much pressure that you feel on that tap. And then stop, and then you're going to back your, your tap up until, and you'll feel it. When you first, when you first back up, you'll feel your tap come loose. From what you've been cutting 
and then you'll come against a slight wall and you'll feel it it's like a I don't know it's a, a chunk of metal in there's what it is and then you get past that next little bump and then you can start backing that tap back out and you're all good see I hit it right just just now and so that breaks your uh, your chip and and what's happening in there as your tap is cutting you have flutes in these taps it's going to hold the uh, chips uh, while you're tapping so that uh, they don't get in your thread and they don't booger your thread up and they will uh, cause you to have bad threads um, and so you'll, you're backing it up to break that chip loose and so it'll fall down into the flute and it won't stay in the teeth of your tap while you're turning and bind it up and cause you to have galled or messed up threads and so in this case right here it's got big big old flutes in there I'm going to hit it with a little more lubricant and uh, we're going to go on forward with it but I really don't think I'm needing to to back it up but we'll see all right if you start if you start tapping and you're going and it feels good smooth as butter and all of a sudden you bound up it's hard well that you want to try to come back and break your uh your, your chip now if you're if you're tapping by hand which i got this straight jesus was with me because if you don't get it straight what will happen is you'll be turning your tap and you'll get to a point that it's hard and then you'll get past that point, and it's easy to turn, and then it's hard. And so what it is, is your tap's going in crooked. And so you're, you're getting into a bind where you're coming up against that hard, the, 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 I guess, more meat in the hole at an angle. And so you're having to cut threads through it. So you'll have deeper threads on one side and lighter threads on the other side. You still have threads unless you really get off, and I don't think you can tap it in there. But when you do get to that, especially when you're dealing with small taps, because you'll break them real easy, especially in, uh, in uh, uh, steel and stuff like that. But you want to be, be careful that when you get to that point, you may only get to just put some pressure on it. And then you got to back it up and break your chip and then go forward again. Just a little bit of pressure and back it up, break your chip. And go forward again because the deeper you get when you get to that hard spot the harder it's going to get and eventually break your tap now this half inch tap uh, this aluminum ain't gonna do nothing to it but i'm not feeling it i got it in straight it's going in smooth it's it's uniform it's i can feel the i can actually feel the tap cutting all the way around so uh if you do run into that when you're running a tap up in there and it is at an angle and you got a tight spot just inch at it just play at it just i mean you might just move it a hair and then you back it up, break your chip, go forward again. You move it another hair, and you keep on, and eventually you'll get your, your thread tapped as deep as you need it. So we're going to keep going. Uh, like I said, this is not much resistance to it at all. I'm going to go ahead and back it up. Yep, just a tiny chip there. I'm going to hit some more lubricant in there. Okay, I got maybe a half inch to get to the, the back of my uh, tap. So I'm going to take it all the way out. And I don't have shop air. Believe me, I got two compressors over there. And that's a whole story in and of itself. But they're tied together. Uh, anyway, we, we're going to, that'll probably be a video too, getting that fixed. So uh, I'm going to get this tap out and I'm going to show you the metal that is built up in that tap and I hope you can hope you can see it which uh, I have no idea hopefully you can see that kind of judging by the chainsaw okay <clears throat> you can see the metal that's built up in there so just cleaning that out getting it out of there so uh, if I had I'd have to go past the camera to get to my brush I'm not very smart so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my bolt in there. Alright, so we're going to try the bolt in there to see how deep it goes. And if it feels, 
you know, feels good, deep enough or whatever, then I may stop there and we'll call it what's what. Because I want that bolt to, to come to a stop. I don't want the bolt to uh, to uh, just just be able to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Because then that's just going to that's going to uh, cause issues when you when you're trying to tighten that uh, side plate up on there, and it catches that bolt gets caught. Then you may drive that stud even deeper in there. Because I, like I said, on this bolt, I'm not going to have a shoulder to come against the side of this saw to stop it. But this is the thought process because I leave enough of this shoulder down here that is unthreaded at half inch so it'll actually stop at the base of the threads and not go deeper into the into the saw so I'm gonna cut my uh, I am yeah I'm gonna go ahead and cut my threads a little deeper there we go that my old butt dropped on the floor so now my old butt's gonna have to bend over and a motorcycle wreck several years back convinced my back to constantly convince me not to bend over. All right, you don't know it, but I just saved you all kind of noise and my tears so you don't have to watch me bend over and grab his boat. Perfect. Yeah, we're all good. I bring back to work. He's ready to go. This stud I think is just slightly shorter than what I really need it to be But when I cut this I'm gonna cut it long enough to get definitely what I need out of it All right, we're gonna have a blank in the video while I spare y'all's ears again All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it to the lathe And I'm gonna chuck it up like this and I'm gonna cut the, the head of this. Oh, I'm sorry. You probably can't see I'm gonna take it to the lathe and I'm gonna chuck it up in here and I'm going to cut the head of this bolt. I'm just going to cut it back and forth to about the same size as this bolt is. Then I'm going to turn it around and chuck it like this. I don't know. I may just leave it chucked as, at the threads, to be honest with you. But I think it would be cool just to show you, you know, back cutting it. I'm going to take this off, chuck it back up in here, and I'm going to start here and cut back. All right. So you can see parts of the lathe that I took so much grief over so many years ago because of a silent video, which um, I, this ain't the 11 years later, but it does look like it's 11 years older than that video. But uh, you can see I work on it. And uh, so it, it looks like a lot of uh, machine shop lathes. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, make excuses for myself, but no, I don't clean it. So, in all, all honesty, that is a testament as to how good this lathe is. It can survive me. So, apparently, as well. That's a lathe that's gone under a ton of upgrades. Uh, still got sore uh, feelings about the DRO, but that'll be in the 11 year upgrade. Or update, however you want to call it. So, actually, the motor's been changed out to... Uh, uh, to a servo so let me reach in your way here we're going to turn that switch All right, and yes, you did see me taking an interrupted cut with carbide on a grade 8 bolt. Nice looking shavings. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so let's get this thing turned around. Now, it, this bolt shorter than the first one I did. So... That's why, uh, and yeah, it is hot. That's why 
I want to do the back cut because I want to show you how I did that. But taking this top off, if I had sense with the other one, I'd have done the same thing with it. But the bolt was longer, so I was able to get it up in my jaws. I got my small jaw. This is original, uh, what is this? Uh, I think it's a six inch three jaw. My my six jaw is over there. I've got it apart and I want to clean up the inside, which hey, maybe that's a video. It's got it's catchy, it's got it's gritty. So I'm gonna clean it up. So anyway, I've got the small one on here, and so I can't get this in there deep enough to still cut as much off outside here as I want to. Uh and, and get everything good. So um, that's why I, I back cut it to get to the uh, diameter that I needed. Now, one thing that you got to keep in mind while you're you're cutting something, especially when you can't get a good measurement with a caliper on there, is uh, heat. Because the hotter it gets, the more uh, it's going to swell. And so with that, you uh, uh, you may be dead on. When you get done cutting and then when it cools off and you come back to it it's too small for your threads because of that because of the heat once it's cooled down so uh and this is pretty hot right now but we we're good uh this ain't rocket science <clears throat> now the one thing about this is is when you're doing it you want to uh you, uh, you want to keep your bit, your piece in there while you're you're doing the work. Uh, you don't take it out because this lathe over 11 years has developed uh, more backlash, and so I don't have to worry about you know I have to worry about uh, my my part not going back perfect because I, I hate using a four jaw. It just takes forever to uh, get a four jaw dialed in. At least for me, I mean. Some people out there, Mr. Pete, <laughs> he can do it in his sleep, but I ain't Mr. Pete. So, uh, all right, so let's have some fun. Kind of funny thing when I first got this lathe, I was scared of cutting metal. In fact, that thumb right there, I don't know if you can see, but there's a scar that goes all the way around here, around here, down through here, and it actually come around through here. I've seen that bone. And the reason being is because I had a cutoff blade in here and I did something extremely stupid. I was tapping a piece of metal and I figured I was going to hold the tap like this right here with my thumb. And I bumped the lathe in 70 RPM, I think is the lowest it go. And it spun around and caught my finger between that and the uh, cutoff blade. And because it rounded the edge of the bone and slipped off, that's why I didn't cut my finger off. So uh, you shouldn't put your fingers in these things if you want them. Of course, I've had one cut off, but that was, I was five years old then. I was, I don't know, 40 then. So, all right, so we can do here. All right, so you can hear me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my file and I'm going to hit the top edge, not on this side, but on this side. I'm going to hit the top edge of that while I'm running it. So, uh, I can bevel that edge to help the uh, thread uh, the thread die as well as the nut when it gets put on. Uh, some things you want to be careful of when you use a file on a uh, lathe is you don't you won't you don't want to point it at you because it will kick back and it's a pointy it's a pointy end on it. Uh, you don't want to hold it like that because you'll end up with it in the palm of your hand. Ask me how I know that. So uh, you want to be very careful. You want to be in control of the file. And if you can't get a good uh, angle that uh, you can't be properly balanced with your feet because you don't want to stumble forward or anything while you're trying to push 
or anything like that and you don't want the file kicked back at you. So here we go. Okay, I don't know if you noticed that, but y'all were the only ones in danger, not me. If it had kicked back, it would have hit my phone. <laughs> so we're going to finish the cutoff here. Okay, so I got started, but what I normally do with the tap is I'll bring my tool post back up behind my uh, die, or my die holder. And this is by the way as I cut my thumb. <clears throat> I wasn't very smart, but uh, I bring it up, I put tension against it using the tool post and spin the lathe head. Like right now, it's it's in a high gear, so it spins with it. Uh, but I'll take and I, I could put the uh, gearbox in a low gear, like 70 RPMs, and uh, it'll hold pretty good um, and allow me to tap until it gets to going up on there pretty good and in which case it'll get tighter and start to spin the chuck even at the lower uh, gear ratio so uh, um, I'll just put a crescent wrench on one of the the jaws to hold it in place while I finish the tapping so I'm gonna get some lubricant on this I'm gonna uh, tap it up on there ways and uh, I don't know I may just film it and just let you see fast forward through this so all right so what I did because it was kind of tight is I did a, uh, I put a, uh, I took a little bit, a little bit more off because my diameter was a little uh, tight. And uh, just as a point of information, uh, dies go on one way. Uh, and, and, I, and I don't know, maybe there's some that, that don't say start this side but if you look at them you'll see a bevel uh, on the inside of the uh, die where the threads are cutting and on the other side it's less of a bevel I don't know how to put that uh, uh, ask me why I thought about telling you that I almost forgot to turn you guys back on. Alright, so. See how that fits. We got it all the way on there. Okay, so. Uh, might wonder why I didn't cut threads with the lathe. Good reason. Uh, I changed the original motor out with a servo motor. And. So your, your gearhead lathe, all of your gears in here are set specifically along with your, your uh, for your speed and then your gearbox. And I might be wrong, but I'm kind of thinking with the variable speed servo motor on this lathe that my threads won't cut straight or cut right. And I might be wrong. I may be in left field. I don't know. I'd have to think about it some more. I just, it's quick and easy to do this. So, let me give you a little comparison. This is what we had in there. And this is what we're putting in there. Think it's going to pull out? Me neither. Alright, so let's check the threads. 
see how that looks all right a little tight right there i may have gotten into the thread a little bit when i had it clamped into the uh jaws of the lathe i want to make sure that the stud goes all the way in and the reason being is because i'm going to use red lock tight 7 16 20 and threaded this 7 16 20 and it's doing good but like i said I've, I've 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 used loctite on aluminum and copper and aluminum and brass um, and under high pressure situations like on the end of a pcp and they seem to hold just fine with no issues whatsoever um but aluminum to zinc plated bolt or aluminum to steel I, I don't know if that is gonna be any kind of an issue or what i'm not sure but i get this and confirm it's threading in there all the way with no problems then what i'm gonna do is clean it up clean the threads on this with and it's getting a little harder now clean the threads on this with uh acetone and uh with uh acetone and then let that dry for a second and then go with the uh loctite yep that bottomed out and this thread's a little bit longer than what I had the other one, but hey, like I said, this front bolt on the side plate over there uh, was messed up, so I retapped it. So I'm afraid that could possibly, but then again, what I would do to uh, fix that would just be to go buy a. Uh, a regular bolt and a washer i've done it many times in years past on uh chainsaws because used to and and on a lot of chainsaws even probably now the nut is not captive on the side plate and so you take them off especially in the woods and you know you leave but the, they kind of stay in the woods so um and so I just grab a regular bolt of the correct diameter, or the correct uh, thread pitch and diameter, and uh, a flat washer. Okay, I don't know what I did with the other stuff, but this right here is Permatex High Strength Thread Locker Red, PX number 27140. I think it'll do the I think it'll do the trick. I apologize if I'm blocking the view, but I really need to go ahead and just get this on in there. It's not like this stuff's just gonna really set up before I can get it screwed in there, but at the same time. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Other than putting it back together. And I mean, that's nothing. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you give you ideas whether I did this wrong, and it gives you an idea to do it right. Uh, the I've learned so much from YouTube that I hope to give stuff back to YouTube. And so I, I thank you and appreciate you spending your precious time with me uh, on this. So we'll see you next time. Thanks and God bless.